Now, what are different ways to extend my cache? So I looked at a very basic example. I had assumed an 8-byte block, but with an 8-byte block, I have a very small prefetch effect, right? So the whole reason to bring in 8 bytes is because I'm trying to leverage spatial locality. When I access a byte based on sp spatial locality, I'm assuming that I'm also going to touch neighboring bytes, right? So that's the reason why I set my block size to be 8 bytes. Making my block size bigger is perhaps going to benefit from spatial locality even more, right? So that's the reason that sometimes we have block sizes that are as large as 32 bytes or even 64 bytes. So in this example with a 32 byte block size, I need five bits to compute my offset. Again, if I have eight sets, then I need three bits for my index. And now that leaves 24 bits over here for my tag, right? So because I've used a larger block size, I'm going to end up having a smaller tag array. And thanks to spatial locality, there is a larger prefetch effect and hence a lower miss rate. The next thing I can do is make my cache set associative. So the caches we had seen until now were direct mapped, which means that a given address maps to a unique set. And in that set, there's only one location where the data can be placed. In a set associative cache, a given address again maps to a unique set. But in that set, I have multiple locations that I've provided. So that block of data can be placed in one of many possible locations. So in this example, I have a two-way set associative cache. So I have way one and way two. So given a certain address, I'm going to look at these three bits, which are my index bits. And those three index bits take me to a certain set. In this case, set number five. And in set five, I can either be placed over here in way one or over here in way two. And correspondingly, my tag array also is going to have two ways. There's going to be a tag for whatever block is sitting here, and there's going to be a tag for whatever block is sitting here, right? So going back to my internet browser example, if way one contains CNN and this one contains CarMax, my tags are going to keep, you know, nn.com here and rmax.com over there. Right? So when I'm doing a lookup, I'm going to read both the tags in that particular set. I'm going to compare them with the tags for the lookup that I'm trying to do. And hopefully exactly one of them is going to match. And that piece of data is then sent back to the CPU. So with a set associative cache, people have generally observed that you are causing fewer conflicts in the cache because now if there are two different pieces of data that map to the same set, previously I was only able to accommodate one of them. But now with a set associative cache, you know, both of those pieces of data can be co-resident in the cache and that improves my hit rate, right? So because of those fewer conflicts, I should see fewer misses. This is slightly more power intensive because I'm reading out multiple ways and it's guaranteed that at least one of those ways is going to be incorrect. So now that we've seen all these concepts, let's go through a few examples and let's work out a few numbers. So in this example, I have a cache with 64 sets and each set has 64 bytes in it, and each set also has four ways. So if I were to draw this cache out, I would add, you know, way three, way four. This is a set. Since it has a total of 64 bytes, way one should have 16 bytes, way two should have 16 bytes, way three has 16 bytes, and similarly for way four as well. Okay, so each block is 16 bytes in size. Since a block is 16 bytes in size, I'm going to need four bits for my offset. I'm going to need as many index bits as the number of sets that I have. In this case, I have 64 sets. So that means I need six bits for my index. And everything else in my 32-bit address is going to be my tag, right? So in this case, 32 minus 4 minus 6 gives me a 22-bit tag. Let's do one more example. So here I have a 32-kilobyte cache. The cache is four-way set associative and every block or every line is 32 bytes in size. Okay, so here's an equation for cache size. My cache size is a function of how many rows I have, which is the number of sets, times the width of every single row, right? And the width of every row is a function of the number of ways and the size of each way. Right, so number of sets times number of ways times the size of each way, which is my block size. 
So let's fill in what we know over here. The cache size is 32 kilobytes. The number of sets as of now is unknown. The number of ways is 4. And the block size is 32 bytes. Right, so, the, so if I do the math, the number of sets turns out to be 256. So that's the answer here. Now I can answer this fairly easily. The offset bits is just a function of the block size. If the block size is 32 bytes, I need 5 bits for my offset. The index bits is a function of the number of sets. Since I have 256 sets, I need 8 bits as my index. And the tag is everything else, right? So 32-bit address minus 8 bits for index, minus 5 bits for the offset. That gives me a 19-bit tag. Now, how large is the tag array, right? So what I showed you over here was the data array. Correspondingly, for every block that I have here, I'm going to have to keep a tag as well, right? So the tag array has a very similar structure. It has the same number of sets as the data array. It's going to have the same number of ways as the data array. And so every location here, instead of keeping a 32-byte block like you do over here, you keep a 19-bit tag. So the total size of the tag array is the number of sets times the number of ways times the tag size. Right? That's the size of my tag array. So this is 256 times 4 times 19 bits which works out to 19 kilobits.